You're watching Capital Connection from the Illinois State Capitol. Welcome back. Governor Pritzker's bill to totally change the way that health insurance companies can operate in Illinois officially moved out of committee in the past few weeks. Now we sat down with House Democrat Anna Moeller to talk about the bills that she's carrying through the House and what she hopes they accomplish if passed. Here's our interview that we filmed last week with House Democrat Anna Moeller. Representative Anna Miller, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I want to start here because this has a this is a full bill. This has a lot of different areas that you're starting with, but we've we've seen the rollout now, and I wonder what what made you want to take specific interest in this bill. Why why do you uh, why are you the the one to champion it? Healthcare is a, is a is an issue that everyone cares about, and uh, certainly the constituents in the 43rd district that I represent. Uh, this is an issue that has, you know, comes to my office pretty often. Making, you know, ensuring that um, people have access to a doctor, to a hospital, and that they're getting the care that they need, and that they can afford the insurance that they are, are that they purchase and and use in order to access that health care. I wonder with that, because we've seen, especially in central Illinois over the past several years, there's really been a highlight on a lot of these issues uh, with, uh, you know, provider availability and directories. Right. Uh, Springfield Clinic and Blue Cross Blue Shield are obviously the big, the big example of that. But this has been a problem we're seeing statewide. Health insurance becoming a lot more centralized. Right. And, and provider directories just not being as clearly laid out and as, as transparent as they really should be to provide that amount of care. When we're, why does this bill address that? How does it address that and, and, and make a real change? Sure, sure. So there are several components to this bill. Um, it, it's, it, it's pretty comprehensive in addressing a lot of the um, pri uh, main issues and um, thorny issues that people have had in accessing health care. And as you mentioned, uh, making sure that you can access a doctor, or hospital, or a specialist uh, through your health insurance um, plan is part of this. So this, the bill as introduced would require um, insurance providers to um, update their networks to ensure that they're accurate and that when um, a patient or a consumer um, needs to access um, health care that when they're calling the, the you know the doctor or they're reaching out to the specialist that's listed in the directory that's included with their health insurance provider that they're actually taking patients and that they're available and uh, and providing the care that's advertised with the with the state's role in that policing that I guess we've seen the Department of Insurance crack down a little bit over that over the past few years uh, there was some uh, strengthening for the Network Adequacy and Transparency Act in recent years the rules were altered on that and we've seen some decent fines issued to health insurance companies over the past few years. Does the bill give the state more power in policing those kinds of issues? Yeah, it would require a, a, a very regular audit that insurance providers would have to perform on their networks to ensure that the information that they're providing to consumers is is timely and accurate. And when you say a regular audit, is that what is there a time frame there that's required within that? Uh, right now, it's 90 days um, in the language that we filed. Uh, we're working with the insurance industry to make sure that the reforms that are um, that are outlined in the bill are operational and um, and can be implemented. Uh, but yeah, but that's the initial the initial provision is to require that. There's also uh, provisions in this bill, especially around prior authorization and step therapies. And the, especially the prior authorization component, that strictly deals with mental health treatments, correct? Correct. Why that, you know, stipulation there, I guess? Why is that, is that because of the, you know, of the way you can operate within the law? Or is that specifically because that area sees more problems with that, with prior authorization? Exactly. As we heard, uh, we had um, very compelling testimony in our subject matter hearing last last week uh, from mental health and behavioral health providers about uh, the barriers and tragedies that can result from strict prior authorization requirements that insurance companies place, um, especially on mental health um, care. Uh, if a person shows up at the hospital in the middle of a mental health crisis, they shouldn't have to jump through bureaucratic hoops and their doctors shouldn't have to jump through bureaucratic hoops uh, with the insurance agents, their insurance provider in order to get care. 
So this bill would ban prior authorization uh, for anyone who's suffering from a mental health crisis and needs inpatient hospital care. So with, and I kind of asked about this, operating within the law that, that is currently there, but is there, are there limitations that the state can take in dealing with you know, the private health insurance market? Or is there you know, action, further action that needs to be taken federally for the state to really make some significant, I, I guess, is there limitations on what this bill can really accomplish? Yes, there, there are limitations. So the state, uh, the Department of Insurance regulates uh, about 20% of the private insurance market. The other 80% are regulated by the federal government under ERISA laws. So this bill, as it's drafted, would cover 20% of the private insurance market, and those are the fully insured plans that are available in the state, and it would cover 20% of consumers who get their health insurance through Medicaid. So about 40% of consumers would be covered under this bill. 60% would not be covered because they're part of a self-insured program or plan, and those are those are regulated by the federal government. So going forward, is this, we saw the governor really make, make this a central part of his platform for the coming year. His State of the State speech talked a lot about this. We've also seen the governor use a lot of what is happening here in Illinois as a sort of uh, sign for what the rest of the country should do. It's sort of like, hey, point and look at it. Hey, you should be more like this. Is that the idea behind this bill? Is this, is, are you expecting this to be held up as a sort of model for the rest of the country and maybe even the federal government? I think absolutely. I think it very much could be. Uh, we know that other states do elements of this bill, uh, you know, in terms of, um, you know, rate reform, rate review for large group insurance. We know that there are 12 states that already um, have that in place. Other elements, states, you know, perform other elements of this bill, whether it's banning step therapy or um, prior authorization. Um, but this is a comprehensive bill that I think would be, will be a, uh, a landmark piece of legislation here in our state and, and a, a model for other states to emulate. What have you been hearing from, you said you've working with health, health insurance companies now, I know there was a uneasiness or maybe a surprise uh, from some of those companies when the governor really uh, set his sights on this industry during his speech. Uh, we also heard in the committee hearings recently there's this concern about, especially around the step therapies part of the bill, that it could just lead to higher costs for people uh, with, these, with these insurance plans. What are you hearing as far as critiques of this, of this bill early on? Well, we, we are working with the insurance industry. We are in negotiations to talk about elements of the bill, again, to make sure that this can be operational. Uh, we, you know, insurance is here to stay, and that's how most consumers are going to access health care is through an insurance provider. So we need to make sure that they are, you know, we're able to, you know, use, uh, implement the elements that we are um, proposing here. Um, but these measures are meant to save consumers on their health care costs and more importantly make sure that they're getting the health care that they need, that their doctors have prescribed for them and not have to face hurdles with, an, with the insurance industry or with the insurance bureaucracy. And, and far too often we hear about uh, tragic situations where um, consumers are denied care because uh, of an insurance policy regulation or determination and, uh, and, and that, you know, we want to prevent that. We want to make sure that insurance companies are usually, are using general, generally accepted standards of care when they are making determinations on what treatments are going to be covered and we want to put health care back into the hands of consumers and their doctors and I think this bill is a very important step in doing that. Well, Representative Anna Moeller, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. We'll be right back.